on the evening of Thursday, the 12th of April 2018. Madam Speaker. I call Simon O'Connor. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Very pleased to take a, a call as Chair of the Foreign Affairs, Defence and Trade Committee on this Brokering Weapons and Related Items Controls Bill and to thank the Minister uh, for his contribution. As he rightly noted, um, these are elements which need to be put on the record to make it very clear, obviously, to the courts and others about what is uh, critical here. I um, want to thank all of those who had worked incredibly hard uh, to bring this bill to the House and to acknowledge previous ministers as well. This was actually brought in at first reading before the dissolution of the previous uh, parliament. Um, in noting that too, actually, I believe it was the New Zealand first intention to introduce this within the Custom and Excise Act. So I thank the minister for uh, belaying that uh, and taking up this National Party uh, initiated uh, bill. Uh, my thanks also goes to all the officials and advisers who helped uh, the committee. Uh, while never taken away from the work that the MPs do on these committees. I think all of us in the House here would acknowledge the tremendous work that those officials, advisers, and the public too, that come in to give us their thoughts. Um, well, a massive contribution. Um, this bill is very uh, particular. It is around the brokering of weapons. And so, simply put, in a New Zealand context, it's effectively a New Zealander, be it a person or a company, that is effectively buying and selling weapons, brokering, trading them. So they are not the manufacturers of these weapons. Uh, they're the sort of person, and just for the want of a very uh, simple analogy, will be, I don't know, uh, buying uh, weapons from Russia and then uh, selling those on brokering uh, to the likes of, of Syria. Uh, it could be from Britain into Germany, whatever. Um, that's what we're talking about here. And why I mention that is a number of people were raising questions in the committee around effectively arms trading. Uh, that is separate to the brokering of weapons or the brokering of arms. This is about New Zealanders or New Zealand companies uh, which are buying off an external entity and brokering, moving those goods to another. And as you uh, might, or rather the House might anticipate, um, the brokering of weapons is, is one of the more clever, if not disingenuous ways that weapons are making their way into uh, war zones. Um, I had the good fortune, in fact, with uh, Andrew Little and Ron Mark at the start of this year to go to Iraq and Afghanistan uh, to see our troops there. And as we took the various briefings uh, from officers uh, and commanders uh, from most of the uh, allied countries, it's very clear that a lot of the weapons that have been used against uh, those troops in Iraq and Afghanistan are brokered. But I better be very, very clear to the House, these are not weapons brokered uh, by New Zealanders, as far as I'm aware. Uh, it's just highlighting that uh, this is a, a dangerous and problematic um, activity. Um, again, not the sale of arms. There is legislation already on New Zealand's books which allows that. So if a New Zealander is uh, trying to buy, uh, sorry, well, to buy weapons, that certainly comes under some legislation. If a New Zealander, for some reason, is, is making and trying to sell weapons, uh, that's already covered by existing legislation. This very simply is around the brokering of arms. Um, it's also the domestic legislation required to bring around uh, about uh, the Arms Trade Treaty, uh, which New Zealand signed in 2014. The Select Committee worked uh, relatively hard on this. It was one of those bills that, when it came before us, looked, in a sense, relatively uh, simple, but uh, with thanks to those who submitted to the committee, it became relatively clear that there were items that needed to be uh, tidied up. Um, the biggest uh, one was just being very, very clear uh, that this applies uh, to New Zealanders, uh, either those who are resident in the country or New Zealanders who are ordinarily resident but might be overseas. In other words, if a New Zealander broker in weapons decides to uh, jump over to Australia or zip over to Italy and uh, broker weapons there for a week, uh, they would still be captured by this legislation. Uh, it also applies to entities and corporations. Uh, corporates and so forth. Importantly, and the Minister touched on this nearer then, it does not apply to foreign nationals. Um, that was something which we fleshed out and debated uh, for a while. So if uh, a foreign national is brokering weapons uh, from New Zealand, uh, that is a problem, but this bill itself doesn't address it. Again, really importantly, New Zealand already has domestic legislation which will deal uh, with instances like that. Uh, one amongst many is to extradite said person and send them back to their own country where their uh, brokering weapons legislation will kick in. Uh, we also thought it was quite important as a select committee uh, that people have a really clear understanding of what is and isn't uh, to be brokered. 
Uh, it's probably not a surprise to, to most in this House, but the Ministry of Foreign Affairs uh, and Trade has a, a rather exhaustive list of items which are deemed to be uh, military and those which are dual use. Uh, and a really simple explanation of that, of course, if you are uh, making semi-automatic weapons, that will be down as a military-grade uh, item and is not allowed to be sent, sold, brokered to countries such as uh, Syria comes to mind. Um, however, there are dual use. Uh, so uh, guidance chips, well, actually guidance chips for uh, for missiles probably only fits into that uh, military grade side. Um, a dual use might actually be um, uh, Kevlar gear that you may actually uh, be able to use for military purposes, but the use of Kevlar and material may also be used in, in other non military uh, purposes. Uh, so that's what we're talking about there. So we thought, as a select committee, it was rather important that the uh, ministry, through gazetting and then through to its website list, uh, what items are effectively uh, banned, what can and cannot be sold, what are known as strategic goods, those which are dual use and which are ultimately uh, military end uses. Uh, we also wanted to make really clear a question around the burden of proof. So the context of this is someone in New Zealand wants to be involved in brokering, and again, I, I suspect it's probably important for the House to, to know and understand that we don't have a large number of people brokering uh, weapons in New Zealand. Uh, to our relief. Uh, but with this legislation, a person is required to make themselves known to the Ministry of uh, Foreign Affairs that they wish to be involved in brokering. Um, of course, if they're not, if they don't make themselves known, an offence is created. And the way that the bill was originally drafted made them proving that they didn't know rather difficult. Uh, I'm no lawyer, uh, and there are much more uh, smarter legal minds than I, of course, but it's very difficult to prove a negative. Uh, you can't prove you didn't know. So you can prove, Madam Speaker, or a person rather, can prove that they knew something. Uh, but to prove that they didn't know uh, gets rather complicated. And I want to thank particularly the Office of the, the Clerks for initially uh, noting this concern and allowing us, along with our advisers, to move through to a resolution. And I think the committee's landed in a rather good spot there. Uh, we've also, as a consequence of that, narrowed what are the expectations around employees. Again, the context of this, the employer, the person who effectively is doing the brokering, uh, should know, should register. But there could be a question at times, Madam Speaker, that an employee of that uh, business did not know uh, for whatever reason. And so we've tried to put a little bit of latitude in there. Again, we would expect the employer, the business, uh, to be letting all their employees know. Um, and so we're not going to allow employees to get off scot-free by any means, but we're just narrowing the exceptions there. Uh, we also looked around annual reporting. It was one of the things we thought was relatively important that if you're going to, uh, sorry, a person is going to register as a, a weapons broker, uh, that there should be a, a report annually to talk about what they have done. And in many ways, it's just to marry up what they are saying they're going to do with what they have actually done. Uh, that report's to be furnished, uh, furnished rather, uh, to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Trade. Uh, and we've left it up to the Ministry to come up with basically what they want to do there. Um, look, that's pretty much the long and the short of it. It's, it's one of those, and I think the Minister used the word dry, it is one of those sort of dry bits of legislation in and of itself, but actually an incredibly uh, important part too. Uh, first and foremost, we don't want to see New Zealanders involved um, in illegitimate uh, brokering of weapons, uh, but really importantly too, Madam Speaker, I think we want to be seen as a, uh, well, an important uh, and moral player in international affairs. And so when we sign up to treaties like this, uh, New Zealand needs to be proactive in, in getting them into our domestic legislation uh, and supporting, uh, supporting good humanitarian and, and legal approaches. So with that, I commend the bill to the House. Speaker. I call the Honourable David Parker. Madam Speaker, I uh, rise to speak.